Hello, my name is Nigel Gibbs. I work in Panel Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This is part of the AX in Focus series of videos, and now we're looking at Makesys B, the Make System Backup. This series is for systems administrators. We're going to assume you got the basics of Unix, AX, or Linux user level commands. Makesys B came in as the eighth favorite feature of AX in the best bits votes. So briefly about Makesys B, it makes a bootable image of the root PG. This contains all the file systems that are actually AIX itself. You can save those onto a bootable device. So if you trash your operating system, you can boot off that device and get you back to where you were. Or you can create a file that the network installation manager can do a network install of your AIX. So this allows a quick, complete recovery of a failed root VG, your operating system. It can be used directly with disks or tapes, or you can make a CD-ROM or a USB memory key. You can save the data to a file for NIM to do the network install, but you can also convert that file into a .iso file and use it on a virtual optical device on the VAO server. It's also good if you want to clone a good image of AIX. You create a nice master image, then you can clone it out to lots of different virtual machines. Let's get stuck in. There's a note here that you must run it as the root user. You want to back up every single file so the root user gives you access to everything. This is actually cut and pasted from my workstation in the cron tab. So this goes off uh, once every night. And we in a cron tab, you have to name the full path. So user bin makes this be. There's some parameters I'll come to in a minute. I have a different file system called slash backup where the backups go as a separate file system. So if I fill up the backup file system, that doesn't upset AIX running. The makes this be also outputs a little bit of uh, information and says, yes, it's completed successfully. And I have to save that in slash temp. It's good Good to know now and again to go and check that the backups are completing as normal. I actually monitor the sizes so I know if something drastic has happened. So what do those three options mean in the middle? The minus i means create a new little file called image.data. That, that has the descriptions of the volume group and the file systems that needs to be recreated when you do a restore. Older days with very small disks, you could use this as a mechanism as changing the size of the file systems as you go if you really ran out of space. Then we have the minus E, that's the exclude option. It looks for a file in slash etc slash exclude dot root vg and it will not back up the files that you specify in here. If you look at the manual page, you'll describe what's going on. But this basically means anything that starts from the slash home directory and below and anything below slash scratch will not be backed up. And you might say, hang on, home is like an important one. Well, I back that up separately because it's quite large. If I'm using the mixes B, I'm trying to get AIX back up. And so it's nice to keep that nice and small and quick. The X in there means expand slash temp if needed. I don't think I really need that because mine is quite large, but I don't want to back up to fail just because there's you know, a megabyte missing in slash temp because I put a big file in it before I went home. And that's it. I could leave it there and stop the movie, but let's go on to show you a few more things that we can do with Make This B. Here is the output file that I get, and it's just telling you what's going on. Completed successfully gives you some good confidence that it's all done. If we look at that image file, then we can see that it's at just under three gigabytes, nice and small it'll do a fast install and recovering if we need it if we have a problem if we look at the Maxis B file if the file command uses the magic cookies to look and it, it says it looks like a backup slash restore file format and it is that's where the bulk of the data is it's got a few special things on the front that the installer can understand to create the file systems and then start loading the backup and if you want to have a look at some of the other options in the manual page at the bottom uh, it's quite a hard read because there's all sorts of ifs and buts and things in there and some as uh, on boxes with explanations of what's going on but if you're working with uh, workload partitions then you want to check out the minus g and the minus n flag minus t is pretty slick actually um, it uses the jfs2 snapshots to freeze the file systems while it does the backups now that's good if you've got highly volatile files an example would be if you're running a database it makes this be let's assume it's a very small box um, if you're updating indexes and data tables if it backed up the index 
at early on in the backup, and then they did the data later on in the backup, then those pieces of the data won't match as you made changes to both of them and they need to be in sync. So the snapshot would actually get that done for you. Minus V for both, it outputs lots and lots of file names. Watch out for that though. Scrolling those up the screen can actually slow down the backup. Uh, minus X is, can be used to skip file systems. We were actually using the minus E to achieve much the same sort of thing. Now I've already mentioned this as we were going. Makes this be that's a bootable backup of the root volume group and all the file systems in the files in there. If you had another volume group, then you'll be using the save EG command to save that and back it up. The nice thing about these both these commands is it rebuilds your disks the way they were. So all the file systems and sizes are rebuilt before it does the restore of all the data files. Of course, if you're using save EG, then you already have an operating system that makes this B may have recovered. And then you use the restore VG command to actually pull back in the backup. If you look at the manual pages for these two commands, you'll say, these are exactly the same. You can barely notice any slight differences in there. And they've been playing some little tricks on us. And I'm a really sneaky person, so I go looking for these sorts of things. If you look at the details of the make this B command and the save EG command, here's the make this B is an actual file. You see, it's not very big, 127K. Uh, but the save VG command is actually a link to it. So when you run the save VG command, it actually runs make this B, but it checks what was the name of the program that you typed in. And if if you say say VG, then it doesn't do some of the things where if you're using Mixis B, it does put those extra bits on to make it a bootable file. Now, Mixis B isn't one of those commands that you run every day and you should be learning off by heart how to do it. So it tends to be you set this up with a new system and then you leave it and it should run for five years without any causing any problems. If you're looking for some help though with the options like I do, then I use Smitty or Smit if you've got a graphical user interface. So you get a storage management, System Backup Manager, back up the system, and then we've got three different versions in here for either to tape, well, very few people have a tape directly connected to every copy of AIX, but certainly to file, and you can actually save it to UDFS capable media, like USB memory key, as far as I'm aware. Um, or we could if we got a CD or DVD drive, although the latest machines don't have these uh, normally, but we can also do CDs and DVDs. The only difference is the size of the image that it will actually try and create and then get you to change the CD or DVD to go on to part two. If you're a smart guy, you'll just type in Smitty makes this be. That's not hard to remember, is it? Then you've got all the options in here. I tend to just go and copy the previous one I've done and use the command directly, but it's good now and again to double check that there's not some option that you're missing that would be useful. I'm not going to go through these details now. So here's a little life cycle diagram showing you what's going on. If we have root VG, then we're going to use the makes this be command. If we have a different uh, volume group, then we're going to use the save VG, restore VG. If you have a, a real burnable CD drive in your your system or connected via a USB, then we can do that, draw a DVD drive. And it also handles the, the read-write and the DVD RAM type uh, models where you are rewritable and you can carry on writing extra data to the device after you've done the initial burn image. We can have the USB storage devices. This might be quite nice for some uh, smaller machines. We'd have a USB memory key in there and maybe once a week you put a makes this B on it as a, a nice um, parachute if your computer or your disks fail or something. For the really older guys uh, that have tape drives connected, then that is a possibility. I actually had to go and look it up. RMT, it's raw magnetic tape drive. Normally though, I'm using XSB into a file, into a directory, maybe an NFS mount point to move it away from the computer if I wanted to. Again, we could use that image and put it onto tape if we wanted to, and perhaps spool it off to a tape library somewhere to, to do the saving for us. I've also done quite a lot of it using uh, NIM. Um, I asked Gareth, my uh, other person in my team, and he told me that NIM is MOVE. With the NIM, it's another story. You create a spot, then an LPP resource, then you can use that B file to actually do a network boot and reinstall AIRX on the disks of the machine. Been doing that for a long time. Um, we can now actually do use this make CD command, take the file and create an ISO image of it. That could be burnt onto uh, things like a USB memory key if you wanted to. 
screen here, burnt them in, copied over to it with DD. Or we could put this ISO image in the VAO server virtual optical library and then do an install from that. That's, that's quite a nice simple mechanism. It's not uh, going to take very long to get that working. Although the make CD command is pretty complicated to work out the first time, so that's on the next chart. So here's a, a quick dump on the make CD command. It takes your makes this B and makes it suitable for other devices. I particularly like the ISO for a virtual optical drive. So this is my working example. There's thousands of options on this command. It's pretty complicated. I didn't realize how complicated and different CDs and DVDs are and those sorts of things. It seems the minus M is gives you the makes this B file that you're going to hand to it. It needs the full path name to this file for some reason. I didn't understand that. S L I. I changed the font here to make it obvious that that is an I, capital I, and where you want the output to go. That needs plenty of this space to work with. My Mixus B output file is, is 3 gig, so it needs at least sometimes twice that to actually get things to work. So it needs plenty of disk space. Um, here at the output file, I make sure that it has 5 gigabytes. Maybe it's not a very sensible place to put it, but I only want it temporarily. Then it also makes two other file systems to actually create the CDs. At least one of these thinks the last one has to be, again, about the 3 gigabyte size. You can put in parameters to tell it where to put these files if you've just got a big scratch area or something you want to document to. Here's is that the output that it gives you and it says making device making image bootable dot 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 and then it stops and we're done actually use that to make a clone of my blue machine virtual machine and that's it for makes this be nice and clean and simple been there forever very very good command to know and understand as a systems administrator please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or you learned something don't forget to subscribe if you want to be told when the next video is out thank you for watching